right? Technology seems to be working. It's a good start. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, pleased to meet you all here in uh, Barcelona. See quite a lot of uh, familiar faces, also a couple of new faces. Um, great to see you all here. Um, today, I will gladly share with you the Dutch national approach to micro-credentials and some of the latest developments regarding our SURF Edu Badges infrastructure. Uh, secondly, I will share my personal vision of the future uh, and the role that micro-credentials will serve in the European education landscape in 2030. There we go. I'm visiting this summer together with my colleague Rob van der Werf, um, right over there. Um, who is uh, doing a terrific job really at managing the SURF EduBadges service. SURF, by the way, is the national research and education network in the Netherlands. Uh, we're an association with over 100 active members. These are, amongst others, all public vocational institutions, of course, all public universities of applied sciences and all the research universities as well. Um, in addition, uh, the academic hospitals are uh, our members and a couple of research uh, facilities. My name is Paul Den Hertog. I work as a project manager and senior consultant for flexible education and lifelong learning at, uh, at SURF. There we go. Today, our Edu Badges infrastructure already hosts more than 6,000 issued Edu Badges. Um, we started the project quite a while back in 2016 with a stakeholder uh, study and the publication of a white paper. And the following years, we've worked on a proof of concept. Uh, and in 2019, we started the EduBadges uh, pilot project with 16 participating higher education institutes. All of this led up to a formal service offering for EduBadges in October 2020, making the EduBadges service and the infrastructure available for all our members. I'm proud to say that the EduBadges platform is open source and it's based on the IMS1 EdTech Open Badge Standard version 2. Uh, to be able to bridge the gap between the US, where the standard has been developed, and Europe, and to be able to comply with our favorite Bologna tools, such as EZTS and EQF level, uh, we have added 11 metadata fields to the Open Badge Standard. In addition, we have developed EduID. This is a service that provides a persistent identity, which is controlled by the learner and thus creating a GDPR-compliant flow for awarding, publishing, and sharing the earned ADU badges. The ADU ID enables a learner to continue to manage their ADU badges, even when they are no longer affiliated with one of our member institutes. The importance of this is evidence considering the added value of micro-credentials in the lifelong learning domain. You still want to be able to access them even after you've left the institution where you obtained the micro-credentials or ADU badges. The infrastructure really is the cornerstone of our national pilot with uh, micro-credentials. In our pilot, we're currently working with roughly 35 higher education institutes on the design and the development of the concepts of micro-credentials. We try to adhere to well-defined standards, uh, internationally and nationally as well, um, to assure maximum interoperability wherever we can. Currently, these uh, 35 higher education institutes are about two-thirds of the sector in the Netherlands. So it's quite a large pilot uh, uh, in that perspective. Pivotal to our pilot project with micro-credentials is the collaborative development of a framework for quality assurance. We've heard this topic come up uh, yesterday and also today a number of times. In this framework, we agree specific measures that should be in place on an institutional level in order to guarantee the quality of the micro-credential. Of course, we already have degree program accreditation in the Netherlands, but we feel that the micro-credential um, requires a different, more lightweight approach. We're developing this novel approach bottom-up with the institutions and use the ESGs, the European Standard Guidelines, as a basic principle and starting point for the development of the quality assurance. In addition, we're working, with, uh, we're working on a common language for the description of the contents, the level, and the study load of the micro-credential. For these metadata fields, we are once again looking at the Bologna toolbox, applying learning outcomes, EQF, and of course, ECTS. Even though today, um, the usage of these indicators is not always legally possible in the Dutch implementation of uh, Bologna. For instance, uh, the Dutch derivative of EQF, dubbed NLQF, um, is only applicable um, for courses that exceed a study load of 300 hours. Well, needless to say, the micro-credential often is quite a bit smaller, not to mention the fact that accreditation processes for degree programs are far too labor-intensive for the micro-credential. This really requires a novel approach 
and how this is exactly going to work in the future is yet to be determined. It's an exciting journey to try and find out in what way we need to organize this. Having more than two thirds of the Dutch higher education uh, sector on board in this pilot requires first of all approval and close involvement from the boards of directors of the institutions, which we achieve by addressing the Dutch umbrella organizations for higher education, the Vereniging Hogescholen for the Universities of Applied Sciences, uh, the Universiteiten van Nederland for the research universities, and very soon, hopefully, almost certain, uh, the MBO Raad uh, for the vocational uh, uh, and educational uh, uh, institutes. As I said, we've granted them an active role in our pilots. They're part of our management boards, and together with them, we oversee all the developments of the quality assurance on, and the implementation of the micro-credential and try to steer this all together in the right direction. Of course, we involve the Dutch Ministry of Education as well, um, as well as DUO, which is the executive office, which currently also hosts uh, our national registry for uh, degree diplomas. The ministry is very interested to learn more about our findings and the challenges we face, and they very much appreciate the value of our bottom-up approach. The distinction between non-formal and formal education made by the Dutch ministry is not always very helpful, unfortunately. Currently, only full degree programs are considered formal, a few exceptions aside, whereas uh, we in the pilot consider a plethora of smaller lifelong learning programs to be formal education as well. Hence, we still need to convince the powers to be of the gray area in between formal and non-formal uh, education, especially when it goes to smaller educational programs, and the importance of registration of micro-credentials on a national level, very similar to degrees. All of these efforts ultimately should lead up to the wide shared trust in high quality, accreditable, smaller courses for lifelong learning and the embedding of the micro-credential in national legislation. Trust is a crucial requirement in our pilots. The umbrellas need to trust the project management boards that their needs and worries are in safe hands. And the same applies to the Ministry of Education, of course. Also, participating institutions need to trust each other that the required quality assurance measures are in place and functioning properly. In order to affirm mutual trust, we have designed a peer review process where institutions will visit their peers and assess each other's Q&A processes. Integrity, capability, transparency, and accountability are key ingredients for mutual understanding, cooperation, and trust. Our pilot simply couldn't exist without these elements. On a more practical level, we have requested all the participating institutions to allocate a project manager, a communications officer, an information manager, and last but most certainly not least, a Q&A or a member of board of examiners. These four individuals form the local project team within an institution that support the university in the implementation and design of micro-credentials. On a national level, we have formed blended learning communities where these professionals can meet both offline and in real life to discuss progress and challenges, and of course, um, yeah, as I said, the challenges they face within their institution. Over the next few months, we will thoroughly uh, evaluate the current state of our pilot and the lessons learned so far. At the start of the pilot, we have defined five major milestones that we would like to achieve. They are the collaborative design of a regime in which the micro-credentials is recognizable and of value, firstly. Secondly, to enrich the current educational offerings for lifelong learning by the introduction of micro-credentials. Also, the design and install of formal procedure concerning the offering, registration, and issuing of micro-credentials. Fourthly, organize and improve internal Q&A measures for lifelong courses. And last but certainly not least, the exploration of legal issues to enable the start of a formal leg legislation process. Today, sometimes it seems our ministry is a bit hesitant um, to take the next step, um, which on the, on, the, on the one hand feels a bit difficult because we're all very eager to do so. Uh, yet on the other hand, I can fully understand this because whereas we within the pilots um, have an iterative design process, we can try and see what works and what doesn't. For legislation, it doesn't work. Once you introduce a new law or an addition to an existing law, um, this is not something you can uh, easily undo or improve. So they want to do this first time right, and uh, yeah, I can fully understand this. The evaluation, uh, this will be carried out by an agency that has a lot of experience in evaluating large and complex projects in a public context. 
They will evaluate not only the participating institutions, but also the Ministry of Education and the Dutch Flemish Accreditation Organization and VHO. Last but not least, they will interview employers and of course employees and students about the added value of micro-credentials in the lifelong learning context. At this moment, only higher education institutions are participating in our pilots with micro-credentials. Fortunately, hopefully starting in May, the public Dutch vocational institutions will join the pilot as well. This expansion of the scope of our, scope of our pilot incre increases the relevance in the national level of our pilot and underscores the requirement for a quality assurance framework and formal legislation. In size, the pilot will double just by the introduction of this one extra sector. Ensuring active cooperation with the ministry will be even more important than before if we want the results of our pilot to be embedded in national policies and thus sustainable in the long run. Technically, I hope it will be feasible to upgrade the Surf Edu Batches infrastructure this year to be able to accommodate Open Batches version 3 as well, which will facilitate the use of verifiable credentials. This also, whether this will be the reality over the next few months, remains to be determined as it is quite a challenge for us to upgrade the running version right now uh, using Open Batches version 2 to version 3. But still, we're going to try nonetheless. In 2030, from a technical point of view, everything will be sorted. We're almost there with technology. The key ingredients are there, and it's just a matter of dotting the I's right now. The large-scale pilots run by the European Committee, uh, which are going to start in uh, May 2023, um, have been a great success. And all European citizens in 2030 will have an electronic wallet in which they can store their ID, their driver's license, their insurance documents, and of course, degrees and micro-credentials. These wallets can be filled with numerous documents and they can be added through web services provided by national accredited or authorized organizations. DUO, the Executive Office of the Ministry of Education, is one of them currently hosting the diplomas already uh, and hopefully soon the micro-credentials as well. The wallet allows end users to share relevant documents and ver verifiable credentials with authorities in a secure and privacy-first manner. In the Netherlands, this means that the SURF edu Batches infrastructure by then hopefully will have been adopted by the Executive Office of the Ministry, who will, lifelong of course, uh, be managing the hosting of all issued micro-credentials. Technology never really works without proper policies in place. The recommendation for micro-credentials and wallets made by the European Commission has been embraced and implemented all over Europe. In 2030, this is still. The implementation was based on the important work done earlier by the Microbulb project, which was continued and refined through many collaborative bottom-up efforts, such as the Digi European Digital Education Hub, meeting yesterday and the day before here in Barcelona, and all the experiments and pilots on mic with micro-credentials on a le national level, where most of you are working on today. Together, Europeans will have worked on a clear definition for working with the Bologna tools on a micro level. And as a result, European micro-credentials use a common language in describing, for instance, the level, the size, and the learning outcomes for smaller courses. Since the power of micro-credentials become most evident in a lifelong learning contest, recognition of prior learning, of course, is very important. The implementation of micro-credentials in Europe, as a result, has led to new perspective on RPL and trustworthy framework that will describe how nations can provide accredited RPL services to all their citizens. The combination of a trustworthy technology and robust supporting policies will lead to a more flexible European education landscape, especially for professionals. I think this is one of the most important challenges today for Europe, and I'm very excited to be working together with all of you to make this happen. Still, there are quite a few challenges to be addressed. Um, we've heard quite a few today already. Quality assurance is one of them. And I think another one, and I would gladly take questions on this, but also on other topics uh, after uh, my presentation, um, is about the definition of micro-credential and the distinction between all the various options which are out there in the markets. We don't own the word micro-credentials. And when I'm having a discussion with an American, there might be a different co concept of the word micro-credential. Uh, the same applies to Aus Austria, uh, sorry, Australia. Australia is within Europe, of course. Um, and this is, uh, this is a challenge. Um, I've had quite a few conversations with employers, but also with employees. Um, they don't understand what's going on. And I think this, well, basically this branding issue um, is really something that we need to address in the coming years 
um, if we really want to make the micro-credential as successful and as recognizable as the bachelor's and master's today. Thank you very much. Thank you.